team positioning as a very important mechanic. Uh, the, the demo here, I get it's very rough. That's totally understood. But it looked like it was still kind of a, a solitary, fast twitch, must jump while firing behind me, I'm on my own kind of game. And I'm wondering, since you've got team mechanics and team positioning as such an important part of this game, that requires constant communication. Uh, the comparison with volleyball players is they practice that set and spike so they know exactly when to call it, or uh, you know, an alley-oop within a basketball team or something like that. How do you plan to conquer that so it doesn't wind up being another panic-based first-person shooter? Absolutely, that's a really great point. And I, uh, I, I would agree, there's a lot of things that we didn't accomplish on that front in the prototype. Um, a couple of ways that we're going to do that is, you know, we do plan to have uh, open up a, a, a line for people to communicate, hopefully something like a voice chat, or if we're primarily in local area play, um, encourage that sort of thing. But also we need to do it through the mechanics. Uh, we want to create that visual style that allows for something that's a little bit slower moving to cause an effect on a player um, that makes it clear to their teammates that there's something to be done here, something to interact with. League of Legends is a fantastic example of something that has complex systems but makes them digestible through as much visual and sound cues as possible. Sam. Uh, so you've talked a bunch about uh, other games and products you're looking at that reach slightly wider demographics than the traditional first-person shooter as sort of inspiration to reach some of those audiences. You've talked about gathering data from your alpha and beta testers right away. Um, do you have plans to actually put the game that you're hoping to make in front of the demographics you're hoping to reach and do in-person play tests? And how will that be integrated into your iterative process? Are you worried at all that it's mostly 21-year-old boys building a game for people who aren't 21-year-old boys? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and, you know, that that's one of our big goals to address. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's hard to say that. Uh, we, we've done, in, in uh, our past year, all three of us have been on RIA, which has seen a lot of external play testing and us reaching out to a lot of various groups. Um, it would be inappropriate for us to kind of put this uh, in, in the in the perspective that we wanted to open it up to more demographics than 21-year-old boys and then only pitch it to 21-year-old boys. So, you know, we're going to make a lot of effort, as we did with our current advanced game project, in getting out to more groups than just people who are uh, male who play games at USC. And then my just quick follow-up is, are you concerned at all about the scope of a game as large as you're talking about, that you're hoping to do multiple rounds of playtesting to find out exactly what's going to work with and you want to do that data gathering with? It's a big, big project uh, for just just a single year. Uh, have you talked about how you want to address that in production schedule to try and make sure you have the time to do that iterative hands-on play testing along with your data gathering and experimental development? Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of balancing that we want to do with regards to where we are scoping. Um, we actually don't have, uh, we didn't have any specifics up there, but with regards to how, you know level scope, content scope, that stuff, we want to build a system that is very strong and then really focus on that metrics to drive all, all of that uh, the demographic research, uh, the playtest research, and we're going to do that from the, uh, from this right. summer. Actually, we're going to be starting uh, right as soon as the summer starts. Tracy. Yeah. So I want to actually just chime in on the demographic thing. I'm sorry, but perma ban and the entire premise and aesthetic that I'm seeing is um, not going to attract. Uh, I can just pretty much tell you that it's not going to attract an audience beyond 21-year-old boys. Um, the whole notion of exclusivity and you're not invited and you're out um, is exactly the kind of thing that turns away those other audiences. And it's, you know, it's why something like Super Smash Brothers, you know, isn't like that. You know, it, it, the reason that it attracts those people is in its premise, in its characters, in its openness and welcome, welcoming feeling. But you're creating something that, by its nature, is exclusionary. And if you fulfill on the aesthetic you've established, then you're going to, um, uh, by definition, not fulfill on your goal of op being open and um, uh, you know attracting new players. You're going to attract the most hardcore of hardcore players. And I'm not saying that's a bad goal, but I think you need to be honest about it. OK, great. Thank you. We, uh, you know, we took strides to satirize those parts of the internet culture that uh, we don't like, and we definitely didn't hit that point. And thank you very much for your feedback. We're going to work very hard to address that. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I have for one more? Yeah, so do um, you guys uh, remember some colleagues, of ex-colleagues of Laird, Dusty Welch, and his guys, they went out to try and build a first-person shooter that was going to be unlike any other with different tropes. It's 
It's called offensive combat. I have not heard of that, no. Uh, exactly. Sure you, you, can, you, can, <laughs> you can probably see a video of it on YouTube. I would recommend that you want it. Their thing was about age and player matching, cooperative play, and if you were under a certain age, what you saw was not the same as what I was saying as over that age, age limit. It took them three years, six million dollars, and it failed miserably. So you have a lot of the same scope that they had, and there was a team of 38, and they had all come out of experienced studios. So I Would like what you're trying to do. I agree with Tracy that I don't yeah. think the execution is, is there. That's the goal. And cooperative play is one of the hardest effing things that you can do in the game. So pick and choose a little bit more. Thank you. Uh, we will do everything we can to address that. And I think that was it That's for questions. It, yeah, Evan, you want to come on down? Thank please? you very much.